Hello, I'm Vikram again. I, I apologize. There was a slight problem with my wireless connection. I'm back live now. And I wanted to speak about the role of life skills in building student agency and how the adult can help in that regard. I represent Dream a Dream, an organization that works in Bangalore, working with young people that come from vulnerable backgrounds. And we aim to uh, empower them with life skills so that they flourish in this fast changing world. I wanted to quickly delve into the idea of how we look at student agency. It, it essentially to us means the power to, um, to act autonomously in situations of everyday life and to have the ability to think independently and act autonomously. I wanted to quickly go into this, the challenge of why, um, why student agency is so difficult and especially for young people that come from adversity. You know, the first part of that is well understood. It's that the world is changing at, a, at an extremely rapid rate. We are seeing changes in humanity in the last uh, in the last two decades or so, which we haven't seen uh, over, over centuries. So it's 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 really a rate of change that humanity has never seen before, and imposing great stressors on individuals and the planet, and it really requires young people growing up in this world to deal with a lot of complexity and uncertainty. This, however, applies to all young people. If I look at um, if I look at um, the other part, which is really not as well understood and needs to be spoken into a little bit, it's the idea of child adversity. Child adversity manifests when young people grow up in uh, environments of malnutrition, deprivation, poverty, violence, abuse, and a lot of stress. Essentially, if children are growing up in a, with a lot of stress, it really impacts the way they grow and develop. Um, it's important to understand this a little deeper, so I'll go into a small example. The idea of child adversity um, can be best understood if you think of how children grow. When children are growing and they're learning to walk, they don't directly um, start walking. They first learn to crawl, uh, then they learn to uh, you know, stand up, walk with help, and then they start walking independently. This is, you know, what we would call developmental milestones in their in their um, uh, in their growth as they're walking. The same development milestones play out in in their emotional development too. And this can be understood with another example: children as they're growing up, um, you know, want the the adult who's responsible in their life around them all the time. So you know, the first time, if if it's particularly uh, typically a mother who's the caregiver. They will, they will maintain a certain distance from the mother so that they can see the mother all the time. And as, as they grow older and older, they start pushing that boundary. They will go to the next room and then come back and see if the mother's still there. Then they'll slowly start being alone in the other room. Then they move out of the house and so on and so forth. They start developing emotional capacities to live life by themselves. What child adversity does, if you grow up in this in an environment which is not conducive, where th there isn't a caregiving adult who's taking care of your needs, your emotional needs, you grow up with very, very high levels of anxiety in your life. And what that ends up doing then is your 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 essential brain function starts to change. This typically starts manifesting first, uh, you know, in children who come from environments of deprivation as as reduced height and reduced weight. So one would, you know, typically we, we call that phenomenon stunting. So when you see children that come from uh, economically uh, challenged backgrounds, you will see that they are of much lower heights compared to the average height in that, in that community uh, of, of children who have grown up in normal environments. This phenomenon is called a stunting. And when you see a child who's stunted while we can see that it's 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 a um, it's it's a physical manifestation of their lack of growth what it also means is that at a deeper level they've emotionally not grown as they should have and when they don't grow emotionally as they should have and they don't get those uh, you know the right kind of validation and support at the right time they miss very key developmental milestones this results in them being um, you know, very high levels of anxiety. They have trouble coping with relationships. They have trouble uh, cognitively in understanding instructions, in doing complex tasks. And in a way, it actually sets them back 
um, from living a powerful uh, life or a, or a life where they can actually be in control. Where do we come in in all this? We have always believed that it is uh, that these children that have faced adversity are a very special group. They, uh, because of their their uh, the, the the experiences they they've been through in early childhood, they need a special intervention. They what we say is that they have failure to thrive, and our our theory of change is that that can only be reversed if they have. Um, uh, if they develop the adequate life skills so that they can go ahead and live their life powerfully. Life skills are you know, defined by the WHO as the adaptive and dynamic and positive capabilities that enable people to, uh, to adapt to the challenges of everyday life. This ties in well with the idea of um, of student agency where if you have dynamic and positive capabilities and adaptive capabilities to to deal with the challenges put to you by everyday life it can be seen as as the same idea as student agency in many ways it's the foundational aspect of student agency it's only when you have these abilities to to uh, to to deal with everyday life on a, on a on a positive in a positive way can you develop agency a true true agency and you know this has been our approach very creatively uh, we have <clears throat> two two mediums that we use that we uh, use with young people we use the medium of sport and we use the medium of art and in that in in the programs that we've designed we're able to help young people develop life skills critical for their success in life critical for their ability to develop agency and live a powerful life life skills such as uh, interacting with others, overcoming uh, conflict and managing conflict, following instructions, taking initiative and problem solving. These are the life skills that we help them develop in the, in the programs that we run. It's important now to understand how this transformation happens and how life skills are imparted to young people in this, uh, in this, um, in this program. The idea being essentially if you take any person and particularly young people through a, a very deliberate curated experience where they are um, they're able to experience a different reality where their being so to speak has shifted it's a powerful experience that they go through then it's very difficult for them to go back and be the same person that they were so this is really our very simplistic it sounds but it's uh, it's a very powerful theory of change where if you take a, an individual through a very very powerful experience very deliberately and get them to reflect upon that experience then they pass through what we call the arc of transformation and they are not able to go back to being the same person that they were and in that transformation now they've developed new life skills it's important now to understand where uh, what's the key determinant in our opinion um, about how young people develop life skills um, you know the programs that we run as i mentioned before uh, which have uh, sport and and art as the basis for the, the 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 process of building life skills are merely the mediums they don't really by themselves guarantee that life skills build, get built in our experience what has really um, what really shifts young people and allows them to build life skills is the presence of the facilitator. So it's it's really that adult in their life who's who's holding space for them, creating safety for them, and in that in doing so, he or she allows them to take micro risks, small amounts of risk, and and make independent decisions, knowing that failure is completely an option. They can. They don't have they don't have to worry about the risk of failure and or of being judged and are able to then develop these critical life skills that people need. So very simply, if you to, if you were to understand it, young people as they're growing up go through you know uh, their ups and downs. They're constantly on this emotional roller coaster, particularly if they faced adversity and they have failure to thrive. Uh, they have very very elevated levels of anxiety so as a result of that they're constantly going up and down in their own uh, in their being uh, because of that uh, emotional instability inside them 
but what it really needs is that one adult who's holding space for them all the time in a in a stable way and in a non-judgmental way and more importantly and most importantly in an empathetic way once that they are convinced that that adult is there for them then as i mentioned before they start taking these smaller risks they start start pushing their own boundaries and and move through uh, their own being into into a new space when then they are transformed and have developed life skills so in our in our experience the most important aspect of what helps a young person coming from an adverse background develop life skills has been the presence of a, a non-judgmental uh, adult who is holding space for them empathetically, kindly, and in a very consistent way, which has really been the crux of our, of our third and most sort of, uh, uh, I guess, the, the program that has scaled, which is the idea of our teacher development program, where we take some of these competencies that I just mentioned, kindness, empathy, non-judgment, and see how we can bring that into a teacher's life. And we've used the same pro approach that we used for, uh, for, that we did for the young people to build these competencies in teachers, um, which is the arc of transformation. The arc of transformation is Dream and Dream's own homegrown uh, uh, framework, which is a deliberately and intentionally curated, uh, created experience, which allows a person to have a deeply transformative experience and then reflect on that experience and thereby becoming a new person altogether in some ways. That's sort of the premise of this arc of transformation. That's what we use in our teacher development program as well. And these are the three programs that we've been working with in, uh, in Bangalore and now in many parts of India. Um, you know, the teacher development program has been recognized as a path breaking idea and has been um, integrated into various state interventions as well, most recently in the Delhi government's happiness curriculum. So having said that, I think the last piece I wanted to really talk about is why uh, it's so difficult for for this idea, while it seems so intuitive and so um, common sense in many ways. Um, the challenge has really been that if it is not measured accurately, if the idea of social emotional learning or life skills is not measured accurately, it's very hard for policymakers, implementers to know really where, where our children are with respect to uh, these skills. And that's why Dream a Dream has always made a commitment to, to, um, to research, to building evidence. And as part of that, We've uh, we've pioneered the use of a, of a standardized peer reviewed measurement instrument called the Dream Life Skills Assessment Scale. This scale was developed after seven years of work and uh, was ready to use in 2013. We've been using it for the past five years. The scale measures life skills in young people aged eight to 15 years old in five dimensions. It's it looks at interacting with others, taking initiative managing conflict, problem solving, and following instructions. It looks at these five domains and uh, is an observer rated scale that can be used to, to, uh, uh, to measure the shift in the life skills of young people. This, in our opinion, is the most crucial aspect of, of, this, of this sector or this domain, because until we really you know, in, in the words of the president, uh, Dr. Weisberg from Castle, it's like, unless it is assessed, it will never be addressed. So, you know, we, as policymakers, as people who work in this field, we know that, that social emotional learning and life skills, particularly in children who come from adversity, is the real game changer. It's really what allows them to overcome the, 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 the baggage that they carry and the experiences that they've come from and really break through. But we're not able to actually, effectively implement this in in education systems because there aren't good measures of of you know objective measures of these domains that we're talking about so that's why life skills needed to be measured and that was our commitment that we made uh, the dream life skills assessment scale is open free for download uh, it's been used in 26 countries and it's being used by many organizations in india too and our hope is there will be many such efforts to measure this, um, uh, to measure life skills and 
really give policymakers, researchers, and implementers a, a basket of tools with which life skills can be measured, as a result of which it really moves the needle forward in how our classrooms look and how our interventions look. I'm going to pause there uh, after my long monologue and open it up to some questions if people are listening, and I'm happy to answer those. Hi, Deepika. Um, I just want to understand uh, better what resource that you said about the Dream Life Skills Assessment Scale, I'm assuming. The Dream Life Skills Assessment Scale uh, is uh, free for download. I will post the link to that after my talk. I will post the link on the, on the 100 website. The most important thing to remember with the Dream Life Skills Assessment Scale is that it's not, um, it's free to download and it's open source. So, uh, you know, it's just, the instructions are very simple. It's on the back of the scale and it's a, uh, it's an observer rated scale. So you don't, um, you know, it's, uh, there's not much training involved. Once you read the instructions, it's evident, but if you need it to, uh, uh, to, to understand better how to use it. We're always reachable at Vic, uh, at Dreamer Dream and we can help you just work through that. So, uh, you know, my email ID is Vikram at dreamerdream.org and, you know, you can always reach out to us through our website and it's uh, and, uh, um, and and understand better how to use the scale. In fact, if I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that the scale is on our website to under the, uh, the resources section. You know, until we have some questions, I think I can speak a little bit more into uh, our teacher development program and really um, our theory of change around how um, building supportive communities is really the way forward, which is our work with 100. We really believe that, uh, that this problem won't be solved together, but what does it mean when we have a supportive community that helps build life skills? I think the, uh, the premise has been uh, this is our uh, our uh, annual conference. The 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 philosophy and the intent behind our annual conference, which is change the script. Uh, the video is on the hundred website. Is really the idea that people from all different domains in education come in and try to uh, try to. Uh, really integrate the life skills approach into their own interventions, really uh, prioritize and understand its its importance. So these these different members of the community can come in uh, from policy, from research or from implementation on the ground. And really, that's the idea that that we have been we've been pushing out with change the script, which is uh, had four editions thus far. And, you know, uh, with great success, the idea that uh, even as a collaborative, like we need to understand deeper the, 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 the idea of life skills and what does it really mean to build that collaborative out um, across various domains. Um, what it really, according to us, it involves is the, the process that we aim to take our children through, which is the arc of transformation. We really uh, allow each and every one of the members of the collaborative and the, and the and the conference as an extension of that to to experience that the arc, experience the arc of transformation really feel the shift within themselves as a result of which they will themselves then become life skills champions going forward that's really our 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 hope for the future that we have this supportive community that works together is constantly supporting each other but holds that space for young people to develop life skills, whether it's in 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 uh, in policy, whether it's in research, or whether it's in 
in implementations and interventions on the ground. I think if, uh, yeah, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes for questions. If there aren't any questions, I'm happy to sign off at this point and then thank you all for listening. Okay, I think I'm going to sign off now. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, Deepika, I will send you the link to the scale right away, or I'll post it on the 100 website. And um, I hope uh, this was informative. I'm happy to always engage with this community and talk more into our work and how life skills is the foundational piece of building student or learner agency, particularly in young people who come from vulnerable backgrounds. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you.